everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review that's a long time in coming, and that's of this little guy here, the Anthony Griffin Custom uh, Front Flipper Swayback Knife. So, um, the, the backstory here, um, first off, actually, I'll say, this is a custom knife, which means that there is not another knife out there that is exactly like this one. Um, this was handmade by Anthony Griffin, and so if you want one, the best way to do it is to... Call, uh, talk to Anthony Griffin and he may be able to make you another one. But this is not one that you're going to be able to find at your knife knife center, your Blade HQ, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Let me just give you a little the background here. At one point in time, I was on the Blade forums and uh, had a knife up for uh, sale, the uh, uh, John Graham Pocket Razel, Ringed Razel. Uh, I got a review way back when of that guy. And uh, said, you know, I'd be interested in trading for a front flipper. And Anthony Griffin said, I, hey, I want that knife and I make front flippers. Want to work something out? And I said, yes, yes, I do. And so we set up kind of a negotiation. We figured out what I wanted, that he was willing to do it, and set a price along with the trade. And uh, then, oh, maybe three or four months later, this guy arrived uh, with, you know, considerable discussion in the meantime. I'm going to be a little bit vague on the price here, partly because it's hard to really, when there's a trade involved, it's tough. But, um, you know, what I will say is that, uh, well, here, I'll do a size comparison here. There's the Grimsmo Norseman, Shirogorov Neon, so you get a sense of it, Spyderco Delica, and um, ZT4... Six, ah, 562CF. Um, and what I can say here is that this knife, the Griffin, is very much in the middle of this price bracket. So uh, take that for whatever you'd like. So uh, anyways, let's go on ahead and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this particular custom knife. Uh, and again, this is a little hard to do on a one-off, but I'll do my best here. So here we go. On the good side, it is nice to have something that is absolutely 100% custom and unique. Um, you know, it's a neo-traditional sort of uh, swayback. It's a swayback form, but it's so it's kind of traditional, but it's also locking. It's also got a front flipper design, and it's also using a modern super steel. This is in 20 CV, so very very impressive in that way. And it's it's nice to have something that's a little bit unique, uh, that you know no one else has a knife exactly like this one. It's kind of cool, right? Um, other good stuff. Um, it is nicely finished. I do like the orange peel texture here. Um, it's not as pronounced as some of the really heavy orange peel that just turns me off a little bit. Um, but, you know, that's that's nice. Um, it doesn't have any kind of a lock stick issue at all, which is really common in frame locks. Um, and, you know... It, it's just, it is nicely finished. It's not absolute perfection. For instance, there are a couple of little gaps. Uh, you know, the washer, I'm sorry, not the washers, but the um, the tubes here do not perfectly align on all sides and things like that, but it's really nicely finished. I got no real complaints about that. Um, the steel is great. Uh, it's 20 CV steel, as I requested. We'll get back to that a little bit later. And the grind is really nice, too. It's kind of a, it's a hollow grind sort of affair. Hopefully you can see that. Well... Maybe you can't, but either way, it's a nice, it's nicely ground, um, and it's a very consistent grind, which is good. Big fan there. Um, it is a front flipper knife, and front flippers are fairly unusual still in the U.S. knife market, but the idea is that, uh, although you can open it two-handed like this, the idea is that you kind of flick it like you would a lighter. So I'm going to try and do this. It's really hard to do underneath a camera, but, ah, yeah, try a different angle. There we go. Um, and so it takes a little getting used to, but it is a nice little design, and it is unusual, certainly. This is much better when I'm doing it vertically, but I don't want to hit my uh, hit my camera here. Either way, so that's kind of cool. I do like the front flipper idea, and it's a lot cleaner in a lot of ways than a flipper knife or anything else. So there you go. Um, the clip on it is nice. Um, it's titanium and it's textured in the same way as the rest of it but it's got plenty of space here so it, it's it's nicely sprung i'm a big fan of this clip on this guy here um that's good the construction on it is pretty simple you've got this guy here which serves as your stop pin you've got this guy here which holds the bottom together and then you got your pivot and that's really it so that's good the action on it is very good there we go it's running on bearings uh, a little tiny set of bearings in there underneath these two screws and uh you know it although it's not quite fall shut smooth i have no problem with the smoothness here at all very very nice in that way um and the lock bar tension on this guy is 
Honestly, absolutely perfect. Um, very well dialed in. Very impressed with that. So that's good. Um, I do love the size of this guy a lot because the blade is under three inches, which makes it legal pretty much everywhere. It's not big enough that people are majorly concerned, but it is also big enough that you can do pretty much any kind of task, which is beautiful. And then, like I said, it is absolutely a unique knife, and it's an interesting knife. Anthony Griffin does some great work. So there's your good. It is unique. It's nicely finished. Good steel, good grind. Uh, the front flipper is interesting and fun. The clip is great. The construction on it overall is simple, and the action is very, very nice at a great size. Let's jump into your bad. Okay, so on the bad side, uh, three things. First one is more of a nitpick than anything. It doesn't actually bug me, but uh, the blade to handle ratio on this guy is fairly low. I mean, your handle is this big and your blade is this big. Not super impressive. That said, the ergonomics are pretty good on this knife, and actually you can file that under good. Uh, I should have put that in there. But anyways, um, now I have. And so it's not a big problem, but because the stop pin contacts the end of the front flipper, he needs to have a little bit of extra built into the handle there in order for these to contact. Um, so as a result, that happens. Not a big problem, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, another bad but not terrible thing is that the front flipper takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, I'm pretty good with it now, but it's not a natural action, uh, and it's something that takes some muscle memory, uh, and especially in some positions. Um, you know, with an actual, uh, with a flipper flipper knife, you can open this guy in pretty much any position, and, you know, it's not a problem. But with the front flipper, you do need to take this vertical sort of grip and pop it out like that. And it's just new muscle memory. So it'll take you a little bit. And But remember, if you have trouble in a position, you can always just pop it out like this. Work it slowly. Whatever. Um, then finally, the other bad thing is that the screws stick out a little bit more than I'd like. Um, I talked to Anthony about that. And the way he put it is that there are bearings underneath here milled into, uh, in pockets milled into the titanium. And if he were to uh, recess the screws further, he would actually need to use thicker titanium here. And so, you know, his compromise is to have the screws stick out a little bit and use thinner materials and make the knife thinner overall rather than the other way around. Um, so it's, it's, you know, not great, but I, I get it. And, you know, that's just the choice he had to make. Um, also, I will say the hardware is a little bit on the ho-hum side for a custom knife, but hey, whatever. The price was right. So no real complaints there. Um, let's jump onto the ugly, and there's just one issue. Okay, so you're ugly, and I, I gotta preface this with, this is all on me. This is on the Nick, this is me not being a brilliant man. Because at one point in time, you know, I've said throughout, oh, I'd like a, a really nice steel, like an M390, 20 CV, something like that. Anthony said, yeah, that's fine. The problem is I'm, gonna, I, I'm only gonna be able to get some thicker stock in those steels. And, you know, he gave me, he quoted the, the thickness on it, and it's a thickness that's pretty common. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's about the same thickness as, say, in your Shirogorov F95. And I thought, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. That's still a good slicer. And so I consented. And he made it that way. What I failed to take into account is that, well, blade thickness is, and, you know, the one time I sent this one email, wasn't being brilliant that day, blade thickness in terms of slicing ability depends pretty heavily on how much blade you know, how much distance there is between the thin part and the thick part. And so whereas on this knife, it's a stellar slicer with a thick blade, this knife isn't that great of a slicer with a thick blade because you go from cutting edge to very thick in, you know, a very short distance. And so the end result is a blade that is almost wedge-shaped. I mean, you can see it like this. And unfortunately, just isn't a very great slicer. It works fine for envelopes, it works fine for plastic wrap, for things like that, but when you get into really slicey tasks, like for instance, cutting up an apple, this guy more splits the apples, or uh, you know, clamshell packaging, this guy will do fine for it, no problem, but it's just not that graceful compared to a blade that's a, a nicer slicer. Um, and certainly I end up cutting a lot of like hard cell foam and this is just not a great choice for it because it's got that very kind of wedgy profile. And so that's your ugly, is that I, this blade was designed to my specifications, and I specified a blade without even thinking about it that's not going to be a great slicer, and so it isn't. So not on Anthony, but it is ugly, and it is unfortunate for me. So uh, let's jump on into your final verdict here on your Anthony Griffin Custom.
Look, I mean, this is a really great knife, um, and it's it's unique, and it's a great custom, and working with Anthony was really excellent. I'm a big fan of his, and I would highly recommend, you know, check out his Instagram. He's got really, really good stuff on there. I'll link it below. Um, but, I, you know, he designed this knife exactly as I asked, and was really excellent throughout the process, was sending me pictures, and very transparent. I didn't pay until the knife was ready to ship and, you know, honorable all around. But, like I said, he designed it exactly to my specifications, and those specifications included the fatal flaw of a very thick blade stock. And so, unfortunately, this is a knife that I like a lot, but that I don't end up carrying that often anymore because it's just not a stellar jaw. It's not a great functional tool for a lot of the slicing tasks I do. So I highly recommend Anthony Griffin. Um, great, great guy. And this is a rock-solid gem if you don't do much in the way of slicing. But for me, even though I love it and it's just what I asked for, it doesn't end up finding that much pocket time for me. And that makes me a little bit sad. But such is life. So this guy may be finding a new home. Uh, somebody who will love it and carry it and give it to do it, you know, deserves. And if you're after a custom and you got something interesting in mind, talk to Anthony. Great guy. But, uh, yeah, there you go. So that's the final verdict on this guy. I love it a lot, but unfortunately, it's just not the tool that I should have asked for. So there you go. I uh, hope this is interesting, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.